What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today I'm sitting down again with my friend Anthony from London Jewelers. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of watches, two watches, Omega and Longines under 5K. Very important price point, and I'm looking forward to, I was going to say diving in, but how horrible. <laughs> ugh, God. So you have a watch YouTube channel, and you have to say die, ugh. <laughs> All right, before we get into it, wristwatch check. What are you wearing? I am wearing a, a Rolex Submariner. This is from 1987, transitional model, only made it for nine months. Yep. Uh, picked it up about two years ago. Yeah, it looks the, the condition's actually really great. I can tell even from here, like the, the bracelet and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's in good shape. A the real dial desk is, diver. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, definitely don't go swimming with it. The dial is somewhat unique. It kind of aged uh, interesting. It's like a, I've heard it called the sponge dial. Okay. But uh, you know what? It's become my go-to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. When I don't sure. want to think about what I'm wearing, I just yeah. throw it on. Sure, for sure. What about uh, you? I, I, another Submariner. No, I'm wearing, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm wearing a PHA I actually just added to my collection. Um, white gold case. The case is a finish, like in a, a kind of pattern, like a diamond pattern. But you have markers on the case mm. uh, and a tiger's eye dial. So, uh, you know, I wear a lot of old man watches <laughs> and I still, uh, you know, I'm still buying them, you know? <laughs> well, I think what's, it's, uh, what's the size on that? I mean, I have really cool. no clue. This could be 32. Sure. Um, but square watches always wear larger, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'd say this is probably the same size comparably to a tank, uh, right. to like a regular Tank Louis, uh, but I really love this watch. No, it wears well. Uh, yeah, thank wears you very well. much. So uh, great. Under 5K, right? Obviously watches are expensive, we know this, even, uh, even entry level watches are expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, while not the entry, these are still relatively approachable. Sure. You know, that $5,000 mark I think is a very you know, critical number. And it's not just uh, because you don't have a bigger budget sometimes, mm -hmm. it's because at least for me, certain things I don't need to spend right. $10,000 on, especially dive watches, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, I'm not a big diver. Uh, I'm not really a sports watch guy in general, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to buy a Submariner. But if, for example, we'll start off with the Omega, yeah. that's a watch that I would actually consider. You know what? I, this price point, I think, is really competitive because... It's one of those price points, in my opinion, I'm not going to mention brands, but you can really lose a lot of the value in what you spend. For sure. Or you can get a piece and spend far less than a watch at five or 6000 and right. get a lot. Right off the bat, Omega, the, the Seamaster, one of my favorites, in-house movement yep. and the newly redesigned dial. Uh, I love the applied um, index markers, yep. kind of adds a nice three-dimensional feel, ceramic bezel. And just a movement that I think is really well decorated for the price point. A master chronometer, uh, obviously incredibly accurate. They really did a good job bringing this watch up to date. You know, I think it was originally introduced in 1993, the James Bond, you know, Pierce right. Brosnan, very, very cool. Everyone wanted it, everyone loved it. But at least I, I felt that the design did get tired Again, still great, but to be in the showcase, you had to update it. And when they really did update it, the full overhaul, right. I think they brought it completely into modernity so, so well, kept super true to like the original, um, but everything from technology to, mm -hmm. to finishing, everything about it is great. You know, it was a great sale when it first came out in the 90s. Then it got a bit stale and they went more towards the planet oceans. Right. But when they right. reintroduced this again, I mean, we, we sell these quite a bit. They're yeah, really popular. They're very versatile. And you know what, for 42 millimeters, um, you know, it wears really well. It hugs yeah. the wrist really well, especially on the rubber strap, which I find very comfortable. I was just going to say that. You stole that from me. Uh, you, <laughs> st you stole my note. <laughs> uh, but no, it's the truth. I mean, this rubber strap is incredibly comfortable, um, kind of pliable, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's incredibly comfortable. Yeah, I think that, that, that for 42, I think that wears great. I mean, I was just wearing a 42 millimeter JLC Polaris, uh, not under 5K. That watch, mm -hmm. I think, is... is Ten thousand one hundred dollars. Um, Forty-two wears very differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bigger, but it, it has a much different presence. This right. is beautiful, though. You know what? This wears smaller than a forty-two, flat yep. out. If you compare it to another popular Omega, like a Speedmaster, that's forty-two. Wears much larger than this watch yep. would. Yep, agreed. Obviously, you have two crowns here. You know, crown guards on the right, obviously for setting the time. On the left, you've got... It's a helium escape valve, but okay. it's actually a manual one. So one that you can actually uh, unscrew yourself. Wow, interesting. So it's it's something they've done on the Planet Oceans in the past. And sure. I think it's kind of a, become a trademark to them, the, the two crowns, which Absolutely. I like. And the, the wave dial has become uh, totally associated with Omega completely. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it works. Black, uh, blue, and then they do a black and white as right. well. Right, which is actually really popular. The white dial with the black ceramic bezel. Yeah. All right, something about this dial though I think it, it wears really well and it makes it very modern where if you look at the the previous variation of it 
It's a bit dated, so I really like the update. It's almost like a mirror dial. I think I can actually see my hair in the <laughs> dial, which is kind of funny. But again, great watch. I think retail is what, $4,900? 4, $4,900 on the rubber yep. strap. A bit more uh, on the bracelet. 52 not, on the bracelet? Yeah, not, not much something. more, and I think this watch wears so differently on either strap, yeah. I would recommend doing both. Yeah. Um, so that's just my personal preference, but I'm normally a bracelet guy. But I must say, the, the comfort of this rubber strap. Absolutely. I mean, I yeah, it. I could see that watch, you know, in, in a wide range. I mean, for me, the perfect thing would be, you know, a bathing suit, linen shirt, you know, and, uh, and, that, and that watch. Yeah, it's a great, like, summertime luxury. It's certainly not a beater. It's supposed to be beaten up, I think, by, by definition. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. sports watch, but really a, a rich watch. Oh, the last thing before we move on to the long jeans, um, the bezel ceramic and the uh, the diver instrumentation on the bezel is actually white enamel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a really, really good touch. But again, beautiful all around. Oh, I like that sound, ready? Nice and loud, nice, nice and crunchy. Yep, yeah, it's nice, right? Stupid stuff with the watches, <laughs> you know? Uh, okay, so now going down in, in, in the price range, just above uh, $2,000, mm -hmm. uh, we've got another historical brand, uh, Launches, a brand that once was hot horology, right mm -hmm. next to Patek Philippe sure. uh, and, and other brands, really. Uh, their 13ZN chronograph is still regarded as one of the best chronographs ever right. made. And, uh, and I mean, they've been back for uh, 10, 15 years mm -hmm. and so heavy. They've gotten more press, and deservedly so, than, I mean, almost any other, you know, brand in mm -hmm. that category. Uh, and this is their sector dial. Fairly new watch. I think it's only maybe a year or two old. Yeah, it's uh, and, it's, and it's absolutely beautiful. Take a look. They're doing a great job. And I think the watch community can be pretty critical. Yep. But when they like something, they really get on board with it. Yep. And I think you're seeing that with long jeans. Um, they make a lot of different watches, but their heritage line, they have such a long, you know, history that yep. they can reach back and recreate these pieces. Yep. And they did, they did so with this. I think that, you know, what's interesting is brands rely on, on major moments in their history in general. Mm -hmm. Omega's one of them, you know, Omega hasn't shut up, shut up about the moon, you know, since it happened, <laughs> you know. But Longines is a brand that really goes into like these little kind of insignificant parts of history. This is a relatively, you know, unknown watch from 1934 kind of reissue. Uh, not a famous watch, mm -hmm. not a watch that people were asking to be reissued. Just a beautiful example. Uh, and Longines took it back, you know, they looked at, they looked at their historical catalog they said how can we redo it they redid it 38.5 millimeters uh, silicon uh, hairspring terrific watch all, all around you're getting great materials and you're just getting a great design I mean something like this is timeless I like the size a lot I think the watch community is going back towards this size it's very wearable and this is gonna be something well under the $5,000 price range that is going to stand the test of time you're gonna be able to wear it today and 30 years from now. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's relevant, you know, 90 years after it was manufactured originally, or 85 years, uh, it'll be relevant another 95 years. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's just the truth. Uh, again, very, you know, traditional. What I think is so interesting, you know, uh, this whole obviously reissue thing has become huge. Uh, and Long Jeans is the brand that is perfectly kind of poised to do it right. Uh, mm -hmm. And they actually do in execution, do it right. What I mean by that is, is this. Um, in, a, in the luxury watch, you know, business, uh, or any luxury, you're looking for originality in many, you know, cases, right? If you're charging $10,000 for a watch, it better be like an original mm -hmm. thing, you know, something new. Uh, R&D needs to go into these things. But at that price point, they can lean on their history. They're saving people money, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to being totally original, having to, you know, cost more. It's the basically perfect reissue brand, uh, and they're, they're doing it right. Do you get a lot of action on long jeans in the store? A lot of the watch collecting guys, they come in and they gravitate towards this line quite a bit. I would say for the average consumer that's looking for a nice watch, they might be looking at long jeans, but not necessarily uh, the heritage ones. Yeah, of course. So, and that goes back to, you know, they make so many different watches, yeah. but they really cater to whatever you, you desire. They have that line for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Big fan. Yeah. Anyway, 5,000 bucks, plenty of options. I mean, we can go downstairs right now and pick out uh, 10 more Easily. options, Easily. you know, no, no, no doubt. But this is a good start. Uh, I like the idea of doing it, uh, you know, a little bit sporty, a little bit more mm -hmm. dressy. Uh, also, a watch you could wear on a lot of different straps, too. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's, a, that's a strap Throws monster. Some strap oh, yeah. Makes it very, totally very different sporty. watch. Yeah. So uh, thank you for sitting down with me, Anthony. Yeah. And uh, that's it, guys. If you liked this video, go ahead and like it. Uh, comment your thoughts down below on long jeans, on Omega, uh, on this rubber strap, if you own one, how goddamn comfortable it is. Uh, and we will see you all soon. Anthony, you do your sign off. So, guys, I am Anthony Kozlowski. I am the manager of the watch salon. I can be found at anthony.kozlowsky at London Jewelers. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I can set you up with a very knowledgeable salesperson or even better, come on in and say hello and try on some watches.